Welcome everyone to the Game With Us podcast. We are here to talk about The Last of Us, HBO TV show, episode one. Does anyone remember the title? Because I did not. I think it's. I think it was Alone in the Darkness. Uh, when you're, when you're lost, lost in the dark. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, it's half of the Firefly line. Yes, I knew it was some part of the Firefly oh line. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Duh. Yeah. I feel silly for not. Which I guarantee you, I guarantee you, I'm calling it right now, the last episode of the first season is going to be the second half of that. Oh, yeah. nice prediction. You don't think the next one. All right. That's nice fair, though. prediction. I, okay. That'd be, that'd be good. We haven't even introduced ourselves. You're already calling shots. That's what's no. Like. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm. I, I'm. I, I'm putting it on the money. I got some. I got some Chuck E. Cheese coins to make. Nice. <laughs> nice. Um. So yeah, I am. I go by Liara, and I am a Let's Player on YouTube. The The Last of Us Part One is. It's it's in my top five uh, video games of all time. I don't. I'm not sure what all else is up in that list, but The Last of Us is definitely in there. So very excited about the TV show. Who wants to go next? Oh, all right, yeah. That, uh, I'm Eric or Mystery, whichever you would prefer. I'm also, uh, or I do some Let's Plays and uh, assorted other tabletop uh, streams and things like that under the banner of IR or Irrational Radio on youtube and we got a discord and junk like that as well um i yeah all the things <laughs> um gotta sell the soap uh but the but yeah I, I should say that i don't um didn't ever actually play the game so i'm gonna be the one who's asking all the questions that you you're you listening to this probably are already aware of the answers to um <laughs> but uh, I am super stoked about the show. Uh, actually, having watched the first episode, it's really exciting. So I'll uh, leave it at that before I ramble further. Yeah. And just to clarify for Eric and anyone listening, um, Aiden and I have already discussed that we will talk about the game only in the context of the episode so that we, we don't want to spoil the story for Eric or anyone else listening. So we'll just talk about the game in the context that everybody's already already seen yeah absolutely which uh speaking of aiden <laughs> hi it's me i'm Aiden. uh i do exactly what uh what uh eric does uh we are the the two one of the two brains there over at the irrational video youtube channel and um i uh love narrative narrative based kind of like cinematic games like that and i remember playing the last of us when i was um God, I, I didn't see. I didn't play it on the PS3. I played it when it came out on the PS4, the remastered version. Same. And that blew my mind when I was like 15 or so. Uh, I've always loved Night Dog games. Like I, I mean, I grew up with Uncharted, so I always loved those kind of games. And The Last of Us Part, uh, part One definitely sticks out with me. Um, I will say, um, not not to get too far ahead or anything. But uh, I'm very excited for whatever if, if they decide to adapt The Last of Us Part Two, which is a whole can of worms. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're, we're so far we're right here for Part One, and yes. Part One is an amazing <laughs> game. Yes, absolutely. Uh, gonna put you on the spot, Eric. Uh, being that you okay. uh, didn't play the game, what what made you interested in the show? Well, uh, so I actually generally it's. Um, I don't know, without getting yeah, a great answer <laughs> to that. Uh, I, I just think it's, it is a cool world that's been built. Uh, and I have heard of the game and heard of it well. Um, like people took care not to spoil it as you guys are and stuff. And to me, that's like one of the highest forms of respect you can show a piece of yeah. art generally. Like when people do that to something, it's because they love it or whatever. Um, so that was one of those things is like, oh, well, I really do need to get around to that at some point. And uh, this was a great opportunity to to get a, a toe in the water of the of the world, I guess. That's really cool that you experienced the fandom that way, and nobody wanted to spoil it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that wasn't really your cool. experience. Perhaps. Yeah, I mean, I've been in oh. fandoms where people are like, "Oh, let me tell you." So, <laughs> I yeah. So, and I, I mean, I don't. 
Go ahead. No, I was gonna, I was gonna say I actually watched a playthrough of The Last of Us on YouTube right right around when it came out before playing the game. So like I knew everything was gonna happen, and but I still wanted to play it for myself anyway. Well, at least like I knew like the big story beat, so um I wanted to play it anyway. And I also didn't play the um I also did not watch the um, the DLC that came out with it. So when it came to like The Last of Us, I was like, all right, I know what this is, but I wanted to experience it for myself. So it was really good. And it's really interesting to have somebody who has no experience with the game and just with the TV show. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> mm-hmm. It's it's fun to look at having, yeah, sort of like a meme awareness of it without any direct familiarity. But like, I was like, oh, okay. I didn't, you know, the, uh, yeah, starting to get into stuff about the show here, actually. But like, his, you know, his, his daughter to start out. I was like, oh, okay, that's not like the model that they used in the game for that, uh, for the the girl he was, you know, dragging around or whatever. So I was like laughing, like, oh, weird, okay. Um, and I, until however far into the episode, I was sitting there just saying, oh, like, you know, where, how is, yeah, I don't know. It, it, I Are yeah, we already we talking in. about we the can episode? Can I in. just spoil? <laughs> okay, so. So yeah, I was. Uh, she's presented as the main character ostensibly for the first what half, half of the episode or yeah. so of mm-hmm. the episode, mm-hmm. and you know she's the perspective character we're kind of following. Well, you um, you start as her so in it was, the game too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was a question I was actually going to ask. Is so did because the way I might I was guessing that it happened actually was the other way around. I was going to guess that you um, would have started as the dad who joel. i should joel. know but off with tommy on the other side yeah is it joel joel yeah okay i was i kept trying to say rick and like <laughs> well, I know that's that's, that's, that's right. the that's, that's the other the show. zombie show about <laughs> right uh, exactly the guy's family. <laughs> yeah yeah in but, the um, game so it actually what's really what's really interesting there's so much in the tv show that lines up practically perfectly with the game you play as sarah until the car crash and then you're Joel carrying Sarah through okay. through the the streets with with the zombies chasing you. Oh yeah, man, yeah, that's a really good switch yeah. point actually too. That's very cool. Oh yeah. So I was gonna guess, yeah, that you were away from, like, I guess you know, I wasn't sure how integral a character Sarah would have been in the game leading you know i assumed you would have stayed as the the same main character that you were playing through so like maybe we were off with uh tommy when they go to the construction site and like they're coming back in a hurry things are you know like or something along those lines i sort of just figured that might be the plot point so we were maybe seeing the other side on the t on the on like the show it's kind of interesting that they were able to just adapt it that well like that's a really well-written video game scene there. yeah uh, that's super yeah, the, cool you hey. you mentioned playing as tommy i wanted so in the in the video game joel gets a phone call the same way he does you know they they sit down to watch the movie and sarah mm-hmm. falls asleep joel leaves and in the video game you don't get why you don't they don't they don't explain why he's not there or what happens in the tv show it's tommy's in jail and mm. the next time they show up, they're in the truck. They're both screaming. Joel has a wrench. Tommy has a gun. And you you just know something went down at that jail. And I'm like, I want to yeah. play the video game version of that. <laughs> yeah. it's That's what I was thinking. I figured that was the exciting what happened action there? scene I, I that need they to know. Like, <laughs> gave you the tutorial. Yeah. Oh, that's it's funny that that's not what happened. But yeah, you were playing the game. You were like thinking, oh, man, that'd be a cool. It's it's actually really scary because you wake up as Sarah in the game and you're wandering around the house and she's calling for dad. And there's all these like sirens going off and and these background noises. And you're like, where the heck is the heck is Joel? I'm the scared little kid. What do I do? Pretty much. Yeah. Um, I was going to bring up before that. Mm-hmm. I think, would you guys think of the cold open in 1968? I loved I, that. I remember oh. watching it and I was like, all right, all of a sudden I see, I hear like television, tell like your know, anchor dialogue. And then I see 1968. I'm like, hold on, what? Well, because yeah. <laughs> that was absolutely not in the game whatsoever. No. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I love how that conversation both like, it's kind of like, 
introducing the concept of fungi and cordyceps to people who are watching for the first time, as well as like referencing it to people who have played the game. But I think, and I know Craig Mason, one of the uh, showrunners and writers, which um, also wrote the amazing show Chernobyl. If you haven't seen Chernobyl, it's great. Um, it's on my list. Uh, yeah, if he talked, mm-hmm. he talked about it kind of being like both kind of like reintroducing stuff that the the players would know, but also saying like, this is going to like, you know, just because you played the game doesn't mean you're not going to be surprised. And I was absolutely surprised. And if you look up the actual like uh, real life, like cordyceps stuff of what it does to ants, yeah. it is terrifying. It is. They are, yeah, it's the, the zombie ant fungus thing. They are, or at least at the time, they were classified as a cordyceps. Now they've, mm. I went and did some wiki oh. digging. They're like orthocordyceps. Yeah, okay. It's, it's, hor- it's horrific. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, and all those different uh, fungi things that he mentions, ergot, that is, you know, that is where they get LSD. Uh, you know, it's, um, I'm trying to remember the others, but there's a few others that he mentioned, which are, uh, like prevalent and very dangerous, like med, you know, antibiotic resistant um, concerns. You know, fungal infections are a really like big problem in medicine and all that stuff. So it was cool to, yeah, I don't know. I was like, oh man, they did the yeah. science work. <laughs> and also, which, uh, just glad Brendan Fraser's brother from The Mummy, you know, he was doing good yeah. science work before delving into egyptology i didn't i didn't catch that initially and i had to have someone magic. point that out and i was like oh <laughs> oh oh um i i might i that might be too i might be too young for that reference <gasps> you haven't seen the mummy yeah that's possible <laughs> uh, you should it's it's, it's been should. a Not it's the, very it's been a long time i probably said oh. all once when i was like four. Oh man i'm sorry no it's I'm okay sorry. you just need to rewatch it that's all <laughs> yeah absolutely and uh <laughs> yeah oh they're they're, good. they're, they're good. a lot of they're fun, fun. And weird link, they actually think that potentially, or, you know, in the wiki digging I did, they, uh, fungal spores are likely what they're attributing the cause of those really sketchy deaths of those early Egyptologists that were going into yeah. caves oh. or tombs. Oh, that's really I mean, interesting, actually. They, they think that's a likely culprit. So it's oh. like a funny link that it goes well, back to that. That's creepy to think about. Think <laughs> yeah. But it's funny. Yeah. So I was like laughing. I mean, the whole uh, conversation I didn't with this make that connection until just now. The whole conversation <laughs> with the scientist is creepy because he's essentially saying, like, listen, if this happens, we're screwed. You know, like with the planet gets hotter and all that. So I'm just sitting here thinking, like, all right, so if we don't care about climate change, there's a good chance, you know, we might have a fungal zombie yeah. outbreak. Yeah, that's and that. And that was the great thing oh. about that opening was it didn't just introduce the concept because the video game did that. And we got like the nature documentary of the ant being infected and then just the question yeah. of what oh, if okay. it happens to humans. But that yeah. whole that whole talk show opening grounded it in a reality that like we, we all understand gro- gro- global warming. We all under we all went through a global pandemic. And so they're they're bringing um, up was, all these yeah. real things. And then they're like, but wait, <laughs> what if this mm-hmm. happened? And the- it just it just made it feel so much more real than I think otherwise they would have been able to. Mm. It was really, it was really smartly done. Yeah. That was great. And I was just going to say, it was like a really great way to do that kind of an intro. Like you were talking about initially with it, Aiden is to like introduce the concept, uh, you know, as like a pre intro scene as well. It's like a short sequence. It, you know, it, it does a lot of the work without, telling you exactly what the work is that it's trying to do, I guess, you know, it sets up what's about to happen without saying, yeah, here's the premise of the show. Although that's really what, you know, uh, so it's cool. It would, I I love it when you can, uh, or that the kind of writing that is able to do that sort of world building, uh, you know, I guess it's really cool. Well, fun to see again, uh, Craig uh, Mason (laughs) uh, did a lot of that with Chernobyl. Oh, okay. which again, you should totally watch. I need it's, to watch it. It's damn good. Yeah. It's I'm, damn good. But anyway, this is I'm going to stop. This is high praise as far as I'm aware. Uh, you, you know, just watching this show is if he was involved in both, that's a good 
uh, yeah. reason to watch it. And I think. kind of like another thing that leads right afterwards is the fact that the whole prologue with Sarah takes place in like 2003 which when the game when the game first came out it was in 2013 i i read somewhere that they i think craig said that he wanted it to be earlier so like the the current like timeline would be in 2023 so like you know our it would be like a parallel timeline yeah but i also kind of liked it as like the whole sequence with sarah like you know like her going to school uh, going to the the tinkerer's place to get his uh Joel's watch fix. It almost seemed something. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just me, but it almost felt like surreal and dreamlike. Because I mean, you're he- because you know what's coming. You know, like this is literally right. you know like outbreak day. But like it's like it's like kind of like the eerie, almost like calm before the storm. Uh, it, yeah. It, to that note, I don't mean to totally dive in here, but there's the right on that point that when she walks out of the house and like the planes yeah. fly by i think is yeah. like a oh, real jets, great yeah. epitomization of what you're talking about it, it it's like or yeah the jets yeah it's like that trying to be normal but the sound's just off mm. and then all of a sudden three the three jet and it's like everyone you know who's watching that's not normal yeah like it just yeah. and anyway and sorry. Derailing you here. The scene with the old lady in the chair. Oh god. Ugh, ugh. That was so creepy. <laughs> god I knew damn it. The minute Sarah and Joel walked out of the house and the camera went to him feeding her biscuits, I was like, that woman is getting up out of her chair. Right. Check off the old lady. <laughs> right. I, I know exactly where they're going with this. And it was so <laughs> creepy. So yeah. well done. Oh man. Oh my. So another thing, I guess, I don't know, it's like a long shot, but uh, I guess so they, they sat on the, the shot of the clock for a while right before she gets out of school. There's a picture of Bush, uh, like Dyer W., mm. um, who's, you know, the, the president at the time here. Mm. So it's like 2003 is like just post, um, you know, yeah. like 9-11 and, you know, it's like war on terror era. Um I think it might be an, an interesting connection to how we later end up with the sort of authoritarian military state stuff going on. Uh, this like, I, I, I'm not fully realizing it yet, but I feel like there's a theme buried there somewhere as well. It's not just the like, oh yeah, like climate change could have all these other consequences. It's also this like the fear of the, you know, this unknown mm-hmm. enemy that's lurking inside all of us kind of, I don't know. Yeah. There's something else there that felt like it was of that era to me. I'm not sure. Yeah, how well, they, they brought it. up, like, you it, know, it, are they terrorists like that? You know, are terrorists attacking kind of thing? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. you're right. Yeah. When it first happened. Yeah. So they did make ties to it. And there's, I thought it was interesting at one point, and I forget where it is. Someone in the, in the QZ He's wearing an old um, Gore presidential T-shirt, which yeah. he ran <laughs> on. You know, he ran against Bush, and he had such a big like climate, like combat climate change platform, right. and it almost felt like a, a message of like, "Oh man, we didn't listen." Oh, man. That's that is interesting. I didn't. I missed the Gore shirt. But that's another cool. That's the kind of stuff. Is it does feel like there's a lot of different layers to the story that they're able to tell here. It's a really cool premise and setup. Um, So in another thing, I guess, I don't know if this is revealed later. I'm just spiraling (laughs) all all over the place here, but his watch, yes, um, like the, uh, I don't want to just like ask where did he get it? But like it's broken and he didn't fix it. Um, she knew he wouldn't, and it kind of felt like, I don't know, is that like connected to mom somehow or another? Is there any conclusion to that? So, or, or I don't know. Yeah, I just got a vibe game, on that. We don't learn and, anything about, uh, about her mother. Okay. Okay. So. I, I, I wasn't sure. It just seemed like since it wasn't the, an answered question that that was another Yeah, no, that's a worthwhile question. question. Like a um, the, 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 the scenario with the watch happens pretty much exactly um, in, the, in the game. The only, we don't get, what was funny was in the game, you know, Joel asked her, would you get the money for this? And she makes the hardcore drugs joke, 
but we never actually learn how she paid for it. Yeah, that's so it was, funny. It was really, it was really funny to see her like go into his drawer and like take out his cash, and it's like, oh, that makes so much sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's established that Joel is kind of like a walking disaster. Yeah. Um. Well, and she uh, wakes and- him up for work. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> she's making him breakfast. Uh, he what? Forgot, forgot the, the cake. Pancakes. Forgot pancake mix. <laughs> forgot. Right. Yeah, he said he was going to be home at nine. Didn't get home till ten. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you know, Tommy didn't fucking believe it when he said, "Yeah, we'll yeah." Be no, Tommy's nine. like, he "Yeah, sure." It. Like, I, it's like, <laughs> yeah, uh huh, yeah, nine, <laughs> totally. Speaking, <laughs> nobody in that room. <laughs> yeah, speaking. Speaking of Tommy, I loved the little subtle thing of a. I believe Tommy being like a Desert Storm vet. Yeah, was implying that both of them are veterans. I think it was just Tommy, oh, okay. but because it was Tommy's truck. But yeah. that that makes so much You're sense right. why Tommy's such a good sharpshooter. Like we never got that yeah. that little bit of background. That actually, you're right too. I mean, I saw a hunting rifle, and I just assumed they're good old boys or whatever. But um, they kind of, you know, like it was small town ish. I mean, I say they were in Austin anyway, yeah. but like I didn't know where Jakarta was and stuff. So I was like, yeah, that's the kind of folk that. Well, if you remember correctly, their their first assumption was Jakarta was like I think Tommy was like somewhere in the Middle East or at least in Asia, and. I guess yeah. I think that the might first be... question was, "Is it Middle East?" And then someone said, "No, it's it's Asia." I don't quite remember the sequence there. Country yeah, or something. Yeah. yeah, and then and like, and she's like, and then we established that once again, the only person who has it together <laughs> Sarah. is Sarah. And it's like, you guys know it's the capital of Indonesia. What's Aww. wrong with you? Yeah, <laughs> it's it's almost like comedy. It's almost like they set up Sarah to be the perfect inta- perfect protagonist, and then when when the thing happens, you're just like, "Oh wait, what?" Yeah. What do you mean? I that's I was gonna say is so that hit me like a a Game of Thrones thing. I definitely felt like I was sitting there watching the main main character. So there was a certain level of like, well, it'll work out. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And they give you a couple, you know, bullets from nowhere right up to it to lull you or lull you into this sense of like yeah it'll everything be fine, will be it'll fine it'll be okay and then and then it's not okay oh, that was man. yeah that's it such a heartbreaking not. scene and then and that was what you know neil Druckmann had said that they wanted you to spend time with sarah and get to know sarah and fall in love with sarah and feel like she could be the protagonist even though that's not how it's gonna yeah. work out the her her past her death scene is like word for word from from the game like when joel's like i gotta get you up and like she's like crying and like basically like looking at her dad dying and like asking her her um her father to help him and like i think what got me for me if for me even more was joel saying yelling tommy help me and oh, Tommy God, probably yeah. seeing a lot, a lot of death in the in the and Middle East was like, dude, she's There's gone. There's nothing we can do. Yep. Yeah, he just stands yeah. there because he knows you can't do anything. That's, yeah, yeah. He's like, no, you're yeah, moving her isn't helping anything. So right I've now. played the first Ugh. game. I think I I God. like tried to remember all the times I've played it. I've played it at least five times. I might have played mm. it more. I consider myself pretty desensitized to sarah's death in the video game in the sense that it doesn't make me break down and cry anymore it's still Uh it's still pretty gut punching like it's it still hurts but i don't get like emotional about it and so i knew it was coming up on the tv show and i was like it'll be fine it'll be totally it'll be fine i've seen it enough it was the exact opposite (laughs) no i i was just bawling i'm just like i'm not fine (laughs) i'm not fine and i not and I think fine. it's just a testament to Nico little. Parker, the the Gosh. woman who played Sarah, and yeah. and, of, and of course Pedro, goddamn Pascal, yeah. seriously killing it. They were both. I that no. I was across the board. Oh, yeah. Nobody's yeah, the, the not doing a great amazing. job acting, from what I've yeah. seen I, I, so far. Yeah. Anyway, we are. It's, I, I mean, I'm having a lot of fun watching I mean, that. Been we are in the year of Pedro Pascal. I mean, <laughs> Mandalorian comes back in a few months. He's got like the whole da- fictional dad thing down to like a science, a money making <laughs> science. 
That was I was watching a, a reaction <laughs> video and someone was like, Sarah can't die. How's how's Pedro Pascal gonna be a dad? <laughs> <laughs> he gets a new kid. We're like, that's Keep his watching. thing. You can't undad Pedro Pascal. <laughs> Can <laughs> uh, um, I, I? I was gonna say right before, uh, like we. I mean, I don't want like charge. Like before we ever get to like the time jump, I wanted to ask, what you guys think of the actual chaos of when they were in the town? Because I thought that was like amazing. So good. <laughs> yeah, and it. So I don't know how it looked in the game, but it. Pretty felt much like, like that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it like felt as though it w- would have been a recreation pretty close watching it. Mm-hmm. It had these, mm-hmm. you know, like a first person view almost from the driver's seat or looking or the shots dead back at um, yeah, Sarah. Yeah, the, the plane crash was new. Yes, the plane crash. That was cool. That, that was, was a, a neat trip. little thing because in the video game... Uh, they, there's a car, there's another truck that T-bones them. And so in the TV mm-hmm. show, there's a truck that almost T-bones them. And as video game people, you're sitting there like, well, wait a minute, mm-hmm. that was supposed to be the crash. <laughs> What's going to happen? And then you just you look and you're like, well, yeah, that'll do it. Oh, <laughs> shit. That. That was crazy. I was going to say, because that was like, I was like, well... I feel like they did pretty good if they just tipped the car over and like nobody it, all she got was like an ankle problem honestly mm-hmm. like that's the uh, <laughs> it was like an engine or a wheel or whatever that was that came mm-hmm. flying at like super high speeds yeah, I, I don't, don't know. know so I was like oh but that actually that makes it like kind of make a bit more sense that uh it wasn't something more mundane or whatever you know and like using it as the fake out like you said is another yeah really cool. I, I feel like they've put these little like nods in like, oh, you think you know where the story's going. <laughs> right. I think the the weirdest change, the the way the infected seem to infect people with, like, tentacles coming out their mouth. I don't know if you guys <laughs> saw that. Was that not in the game? <laughs> no, they just bite you. I mistook it initially because she, the old grandma was leaning down by the woman's head. So I thought when she came up, it was hair in her mouth. It looked no. like that. And it too. wasn't <laughs> until later. I was no. like, oh, that's not it hair. Is, it is, that's, that's, that's almost like, I, I'll be honest with you, I prefer they bite me. I yeah. would prefer biting. <laughs> I, I don't want you to so shove creepy. that stuff. Yeah. That's it's, so creepy. Uh, 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 yeah. You know, it's very, the whole thing is, well, and it is it's just like use mouth to open hole and. Uh, yeah it's weird and then in fact it's terrifying it's gross yeah and and these Um, are just the normal ones we haven't met gotten the clickers yet no (laughs) (laughs) we get to be more infected next episode (laughs) yeah i'm I'm really excited for that (laughs) just Mm -hmm. (laughs) what are they gonna do now (laughs) yeah do you guys want to talk about uh i guess it'll be a neat transition if you guys want to talk about like the the time jump Right. I was going to sort of in, you know, that was a bit of what I was going to get at was the connection or at least comparison or contrast between Ellie and uh, Sarah, I guess. Um, I don't know if that's too much past the time jump. We can. No, we can still talk about about that for sure. We can talk. talk, It ties in the time jump. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. I was going to say it's a borderline segue, right? I I think (laughs) the set design in in like the t- post time jump that's when i was realized like holy shit this is like straight from the game so so much is straight from the game it's ridiculous like, like yeah to even like their outfits yeah they're wearing the same clothes <laughs> yeah it's awesome yeah when, when joel if he ever pulls out the the classic like green shirt i'm gonna lose my mind even the <laughs> backpacks even the, the backpacks, backpacks are the same yeah, Ellie's backpack has like all her little details on it. It's like, what? That's awesome too. That uh, that's the stuff that shows like, uh, yeah, like care for the source material or whatever yeah, and stuff it's crazy. like that. That's how you keep your your loyal fan base at the heart of it. That's I awesome. was I was half waiting for uh, Pedro to just like go hold on a second, guys. Just pull take out his backpack and just, I don't know, make craft a shiv or something, <laughs> <laughs> like I did all the all the damn time. 
I'm sure we'll I, get to that. Yeah, I'm wondering if they're going to have a little Easter egg to crafting in the video game. Just like, because they just like hunker mm. over the backpack and make this little like arm motion. <laughs> like, yeah. I want to see yeah. that. <laughs> Maybe someone does it and someone else is like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like, yeah, What's, view from the wrong angle yeah, or something. What's wrong like, with you? Yeah. Should I leave? <laughs> But, um, Eric, I will say, I get what you were talking about, though. Like the, the transition from the U.S. government to uh, FIDRA, uh, the right. guys who are leading the quarantine zone, like super authoritarian. I mean, literally the first thing you see them, they uh, help a child. Yeah. Well, and you know. so, yeah, that introduction to that world by way of this random kid that's wandering in out of the, you know, the wilderness, essentially, I that was... That was awesome. They start with the shot on his shoes. Like, you know, we follow him into the camp, the compound. He's handled by everybody. Mm. And then, you know, we get back, we, we check back in with him out with uh, Joel, you know, by and recognize him by his shoes again while he's getting dragged out. To the, uh, it is like, that's another really impactful moment. Uh, having the other ladies like, I can't, I, I can't. And we're like, what's, whoa, like they're on dead body patrol. What could that be about? And then, holy shit. So, yeah, which just goes to show you like what the last 20 years have done to Joel. The fact that he can just pick up the right. body yeah. of a child like nothing and just dump it in there. He's blocked his emotions off so hard that. He's yeah. like doing all of the worst. You know, he goes up to the guy and he's like, you know what? Which one pays more? Well, that'd be the one with the shit. And yeah. He takes that he's job. Like, sure. like it's, oh. Yeah. He's, yeah. Ugh. And while at the same time, basically doing uh, black market smuggling stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. With uh, um, with Tess. The uh, the other thing I was going to say on the way in that we got yeah. to like kind of be introduced to that that kind of military or militaristic authoritarian vibe with the the graffiti like in the first couple scenes of just like scanning through you see the graffiti and then you see some other kids having to paint back over graffiti and that's <laughs> yeah. like another one of those passive like story to, or you know background world building things i was like that's i mean we already know that there's you know this militaristic regime and that there's you know some amount of resistance to it that's being organized and that there's pushback against that and like i was like oh that's so cool they did that in like three shots awesome yeah yeah and then uh and then the you know the the public execution thing yeah i was gonna bring that right. up because that was <laughs> of course that that was rough right, <laughs> right. You and like for what them, like, like leaving yeah for uh, leaving and un unauthorized yeah. entry and unauthorized exit I thought yeah. it was funny. So it's like unauthorized exit and then un unauthorized re-entry, which is like, <laughs> yeah, so you can't leave. So you can't leave. But if you do leave, you don't come sure back. shit better don't not come, come back. back. No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, um, yeah, because like, don't come back in case you got bit by a, it's by a true. clicker or whatever the heck. Right. That was the whole thing with the kid is that, like, yeah, they had that one mark on him. Yeah, that one little thing. And then they were infected. But it was, like, it shocked me at first that, like, we've gone back to, like, these medieval times with the hangings. Because I'm like, you have, like, wouldn't it be more humane to just shoot them? Like, I would think that that would be the style of execution. But then... Bullets are expensive. That, yeah, bullets are expensive. And then there's also the fear factor. Like, I suppose that's true, too. Is like a public We're going to publicly... Spectacle. Yeah, mm. it's a public. I was, it, was, it was just like, oh, man, I was not... I wasn't expecting that. That caught me off guard. Yeah, I mean, Rick Grimes was in The Walking Dead, you know. So, uh, he's like, we don't want to waste the bullets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need those. Yeah, we need those. You're not worth it. I do think it's interesting as well, though, that they've, uh, they, like, nod to through the very, like, with um, Joel being able to smuggle pills and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, they, they describe that there is still some infrastructure left functioning. Um you know, that there are these pockets of, you know, a more organized uh, holdout of what was before. I didn't watch a ton of The Walking Dead either, but it didn't seem to <laughs> me that that was a consistent thing. It seemed like it was not as many like residual government enterprise things as it was just like random folk. Not until the later seasons, but but also the walk. 
but also in the walking dead and in the last of us most of the the world building is like 20 years after in which the it's walking like, dead yeah. a good amount of it is like progressing like right when it starts then a like year after so, so forth it, it is stuff, so. i thought that was kind of cool that there were yeah. there is this kind of uh, some amount of the old world that's still holding on, I guess. Uh, that's kind of cool. And that this is the closest we have <laughs> to that, that we're, you know, that, that humanity was able to salvage is like, yeah, the militarized prison essentially. But uh, I don't know. It's cool. It's a, it's a cool vibe. It's a dark vibe. <laughs> it is. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. But the uh, but it's like really well executed. It's a dark vibe. Is, is the more accurate way to say what I was trying to get. <laughs> what did you guys think of Tess? I love Tess. <laughs> but I forget the actress, uh, the blonde lady. She uh, was in it's, Fringe or something. So bad with names. She, I think her name is Anna something. She was a yeah, 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 yeah. She's getting her face beat in while she's trying to say, look, let's just call this all the things. Yeah. Off. Yeah. No, her intro was awesome. Yeah. I have like one note that I could read that was like, Tess is a badass. I was wondering how that <laughs> came across to a new, to a new viewer because knowing Tess, you know, Robert's like, let's just let it. Well, she says, let's, let's just let it go. And Robert's like, come on. And like, she she's like uh-huh. it's not a big deal. I'll just go home and drink till my fa-. and like knowing Tess, I'm like Sh- Robert. She's gonna kick your ass. And I didn't know if those oh. undertones were were still able to pick up on. It was so clear who was actually scared. <laughs> that that was you know the thing, and yeah. like it was awesome. Well, like it was so well done. Yeah, and it's it's not even that she he's scared of Tess. He's scared of Tess sicking Joel on him. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I, and I mean, it, that wasn't necessarily like to me, that wasn't obvious, but it was pretty, you know, just reading that room. Like she's sitting there just like, look, whatever. Don't worry about and it. I think he does make, <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, I'll talk him down. Don't worry. I think, you know, there is some commentary about Joel yeah. as well, but the whole thing was just like, he's got his two goons there with her in the chair. He's been punching her face. She and has control was, of the room. And yeah. 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 He's crapping his pants yeah. still. And it's, oh, it was very cool, cool intro to her character. Apparently awesome. that scene, uh, in the interrogation was like Anna's like first day on set. Oh, and like, she like killed it. Man. That's awesome. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and in your check for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because like um, in the game, the whole thing with Robert, if I remember correctly, it was like the first. Two, it was like the first two hours or so, and like there that. was definitely like there's definitely like one or two combat encounters because you know in the game we got to teach you how to fight, right, and all that stuff. And yeah. uh, I I imagine in in the show we might not get a whole bunch of that too much because that would just be like it just doesn't feel the same if you're watching it compared to doing it well yeah yeah i mean that's that's a video very video gamey sequence going through robert's compound and taking out all of his men so yeah it doesn't quite Mm -hmm. i i think Mm -hmm. they made a smart choice to just kind of let it happen off camera and Uh just move the story along because that's that's the important part so i think that worked out well so that's yeah i actually and i i think it raises the stakes a lot or it seems like that would raise the stakes more the way they did it now because it would put joel in a position where it's like okay yeah he's supposed to be a badass but that's he if he can just like walk through and single-handedly clear out a whole crew that seems like tim and tess (laughs) okay yeah him and tess it's two people taking out 50 guys all at once somehow (laughs) Well, well, Tess well, you, still, yeah, that might lower the stakes in a in a more standard well, TV. Well, they are. If you remember, situation. Tess starts it by just capping a guy in the head, like immediately in the middle of a sentence. Yeah, yeah, no, they, that's right. Because the two guys come out and they're like, "We're gonna, we're gonna beat you up. No, you better turn yeah, around like, now." He's, he's like, and Tess just shoots I will do him. Blah blah. <laughs> yeah, he's he's like it's a strong play. I mean, Tess honestly. Just shoots. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, bitch, I will bash you, blah, blah, blah. She's like, fuck this. And yeah, just I just... <laughs> I forgot about that. I was it's gonna great. be patient. Tess is amazing. Yeah, it's funny. 
Yeah, no, her I oh, that's a fun character. I'm I'm glad that her badassery came through because I was I was like, I don't know how this is reading for people who aren't in the know. I also thought it was really cute when you have a quick scene of like Tess climbing into bed with Joel. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. because it's kind of implied it's implied in the game that they're that they either are or were a thing. Mm-hmm. Like romantically. And I think that climbing in the bed thing is like a subtle, a subtle way of like maybe they are currently a thing. Because I mean, if you look at their relationship, like as soon as Joel wakes up and sees Tess with the black eye, he is literally like, "I'm going to kill whoever yeah. did this." Yes, to yeah, immediately. Like he moves the chair or the table or whatever. Like it squeaks when he gets up, and she's like, yeah, "Calm yeah. down." <laughs> yeah, and I mean, so I thought it was pretty cool too because it's like. They didn't do the standard Hollywood, like, let's show a right. sex scene to get that across. Like, it was something much smaller, yeah. but almost, like, more intimate. Because it was that, like, these two very, like, closed off, unemotional characters doing something very kind of tender. Yeah. And, mm. like, I don't know. It it gets that point That's across. something you do in, well. like, an established relationship, too. You just kind of, like, crawl in to bed together and put an arm around each other. And right. that's, like, all that it really needs to be. So it kind of gave it this feeling of, like... They've just fallen into these roles and they're like comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like it, it's, yeah, like that, they don't interact on that level with anybody else very clearly. You know, that, that was the thing that was cool to me is like, okay, both these people who are, yeah, just shut off or mm-hmm. found each other somehow. And that's like, oh. Yeah, these so, two people um, who have been brutalized by this world. I mean, right. she the way like Tess kind of like calm, kind of like is able to like calm Joel down, but like Tess also kind of gives Joel direction. Yeah, because like otherwise he would just mm-hmm. be kind of like a lone mess, kind of just figuring out his place in the world. Especially since Tommy isn't there anymore. I mean, right. like if you, uh, I think who was it, Craig. I listened to the uh, the the HB, last plus HBO podcast with Troy Baker, Craig Mason, and Neil Druckmann. I think it was Neil or Craig talked about how Tess guides Joel almost like she's kind of like talking to him as like a child, basically like telling him what to do and how to feel and all that, how to direct his uh, anger towards him. Like where you know she's like, you know, tells him like, listen, like I told him, I told Robert that you wouldn't hurt him, but I really I'm want you very to hurt him. much like you to hurt him. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, very much like for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was, just, yeah, that like kind of confirms that, like, look, she was just like running that yeah. table to get out of the room without getting, you know, buried because it wasn't a strong hand for her at the time, but she was going to win. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. She it's was just, just cool. ready to get out of there and then come back, <laughs> come back <Okay>. later. <laughs> We got this. She uh, then, she um, she chose to lose to lose the battle to win the war. Basically. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Mm. Tactical withdrawal. I'm gonna go mm. home and stock up, <laughs> gather my ammo. I'm gonna I'm gonna get my uh my my uh my hubby Pedro Pascal. You know, <laughs> put a murder this guy. <laughs> Which by the you know, by the way, I gotta say. Uh, Pedro rocks the whole silver fox look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's a it's a he's a good looking dude. They, I gotta say that I, mm. they all just I fall into the roles so well. Like mm-hmm. even like the voice and their mannerisms and the way that they look. Like I, that that was a question I was going to ask you guys. Is yeah, is it, do they? How well it? You know, I've assumed so far there hasn't been any complaints in that. Regard, I. But. I would say well they fit the the character casting and all that. Uh, I will say, uh, and well, uh, so far everyone's been great. I mean, hell, one of the characters, Marlene, is actually played by the woman who played her in the game. Right. So it's literally the same I person. Saw that on the post episode. Thing there are so like the biggest complaints that I heard were that Bella doesn't look like Ellie, and at this yeah. point, like I've. You know, after watching that episode, I'm like, that's Ellie. Like, it, I don't, she might not have the right hair color, but I don't even, like, notice that anymore. Like, that is Ellie. Um, Pedro, Pedro falls so well into Joel and 
and like I forget that it's I forget that it's Pedro, and I'm like, that's that's Joel up on that screen. Mm-hmm. That's Joel. <laughs> the the only person yeah. for me that's completely flawless that I forget is an actor is Marlene. Like she just feels like she was plucked from the video game and deposited somehow into live action form. <laughs> She's just so perfect. Yeah. Well, I think they modeled the character even they, after yeah. her. she was uh, like they were saying. So I mean, it, it, it that is going to be a uh, super close fit. It's amazing scenes, how uh, from when I saw it's, after anyway. the, the the whole casting is great. Honestly, like it's it's super cool how much they uh, energy it seems that they've dedicated to honestly recreating you know the source material. Um, oh yeah. You know, and, yeah, and then just generally making something awesome as well. It's not just uh, like a recreation of the same thing necessarily or like regurgitation or what have you. It's like using it and permutating on the theme or whatever. It's, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's and speaking of Bella Ramsey, um, whenever she curses and yells the fireflies, I just I just hear Ashley Johnson. Yeah, it sounds, her intonation is the, the yeah. like, exactly the same. She puts the same emphasis on the same syllables. It, it's, Which, yeah. I, I, awesome. I love that scene is like six, seven, eight, and she just yeah. flips them off. It's, <laughs> it's so goddamn snarky. <laughs> um, um, and, also, one lo- it was a great introduction to yeah. her character yeah. too. This sort of one- like defiance in the face of power. Oh yeah, that's and that's and basically uh, Ellie's a, a smart ass to a fault, and we love her for it. Yeah. One one <laughs> one neat part of world building I saw is that the lady with the clipboard. I was like, I noticed them like she's not writing on paper. Oh. I noticed that she's she's writing on. I think she's it was like. Chalk? No, board? it was um. Just like a paper towel, it, oh. it, and I like like a piece of paper. It looked like a towel or a fabric. I'll have to check that. And, and I'll have to check that. Yeah, a couple different it was people definitely holding scraps of stuff yeah. to write on throughout. That I didn't catch that one though. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah, and I was like, man, in this world, you can't even get paper. Well, that's like when Joel Joel gives the guard the drugs, and he says, "I need the bag back because you can't get plastic it's, bags." Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, right. he was probably he saw that. He probably found that bag, and he's like, "Oh my god, yes." <laughs> Plastic. Yes. <laughs> Gonna need to keep this forever. Uh, I mean, it's either that. I mean, otherwise, their currency is just you know they use monopoly money over there. Ration, ration cards. cards that's all. Right, yeah, I that's think. their currency. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know ration it's ration cards. cards, but I just can't. I can't look at that and not think it's of monopoly, monopoly money. money. Yeah, because it's they do look like it for yeah. sure. Maybe it's because you know, like I'm an American, so I'm used to green for money. So you know, in other countries, it's color. It's a coded color coded differently. So. I don't know, just me being dumb. Yeah, denominations of bills or whatever. I, I want to know mm. about about this factory that's supposedly in Atlanta training out guns and pills. Oh. Because that's, right. that's Pil- not... Pills and bullets. Yeah, like that's not a... <laughs> that's not brought up in the video game. I'm like, in, in what... How does oh, this yeah? work? Who's who's alive well, there? How are they securing themselves? <laughs> right. Well, that's what I was wondering is, but you'd... Uh, so, like, if you're the, the uh, Fedra or whatever, yeah, I mean, you need yeah, bullets yeah, definitely. for sure. And, um, but that might be an easier thing to, to, you'd go to a pill mill because you definitely need to have, or like, that's a more specialized subset of equipment, I would assume. And then maybe you can, like, throw a munitions factory on I don't know. Or some, I don't know. But, yeah, it is weird to imagine how you, like, how that happened. Uh, yeah, it'd be cool to see if that's something we investigate with the series or not. But I don't know. I, yeah, I wonder if they're going to send them to Atlanta or, or if they'll feel like that's a Walking Dead thing. It could be either way. I think it'd be pretty neat. Uh, I mean, probably it is where the CDC actually is. Something yeah. for yeah. season two <laughs> or three. <laughs> yeah, right. Hanging out for five after it gets syndicated. <laughs> yeah, or HBO will like treat it as The Walking Dead, and we'll have like seven prequel spinoff shows. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Let's get you know some more games. Let's crank it out. They blew up the CDC in The Walking Dead, so I don't know how, oh, wow. how good it is in here. No, they did. Yeah, it, it, it's the whole thing. Spoilers. Gosh. It's, oh wow! I'm, so, I'm sorry you haven't seen a show that's ten years old. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> I haven't played a game that's how old is this At least 10. Okay, you know what? You know what? You know what? 
<laughs> I, under- I understand that. I understand Did the I difference. Say earlier about respecting art. And not <laughs> okay, oh, okay, okay. You know what? Listen, <laughs> listen. You're right. You're right. But shut up. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I, I like I said. I think that people showing that kind of concern for the art is the is the thing. Yeah. You know, it's not some deference that everyone owes any piece of art, but I think if people do that, it's because they care, you yeah. know, or they want someone to experience it the same way they did. And I mean, obviously, that's not a show you're that worried about. Yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> Which seems fair to me. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I was going to ask uh, Liara, how do you feel about the difference between how Joel and Tess met? Uh, Ellie and Marlene in the game compared to how they did it in the show. I th- I mean I thought it was pretty accurate to the game. I know it's it's slightly different, but they still it's had... like slightly different. Yeah, but it it still was really accurate in that you know Ellie attacks Joel, Marlene is you know shot and bleeding out. Um, yeah, and they made it like this really comical scene too when it shouldn't have been. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. Stop! You're <laughs> half your ears off your head yeah. or something. Like, yeah, because it, it, it was like lines that shouldn't have hit like jokes for yeah. me. That made me laugh. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry. That no, was okay. In the game, I remember like Ellie and Joel have a bit of a scuffle, but in the show, Ellie just fairly lunges at him, yeah. and J- and Joel just like floors her immediately. Yeah, <laughs> this little child trying to stab him. Um, and it also I loved that. Res- like reflex from him it was funny or like a cool character yeah. you know he's like he's just ready yeah. for that because he's re- yeah he's been used to that kind of and, and ellie's little like what are they capable of <laughs> was great yeah <laughs> you're like oh shit <laughs> right uh i also loved how the interaction between marlene and joel and tess how it felt how I liked how in the game i I'm correct it's been, it's been a while since i played in the games marlene was like oh hey uh, so, um, since you guys got nothing better to do now, uh, how about you go do this thing for me? In which, if I remember, in, in the show, Marlene is, like, super desperate. And she's like, hey, listen, since you guys are here, um, take this girl, you know, please. I'm kind of gut shot here. Also, I love the line, please remember I'm bleeding, I'm, I'm bleeding I'm out I'm bleeding right out, now. yeah. Talk as long <laughs> yeah, as you like- want, but please remember I'm bleeding out. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, in your own time. Yeah, in your own time. Well, that's like in the game, you meet her and she has that gun wound, and then you f- yeah, like she yeah. she takes you follow her to the base, and the whole time she's like clutching your side, and you're like, do you need like a bandage or <laughs> like is there something <laughs> yeah. I can do for you? <laughs> that's funny. I wonder if that's not a like nod to or like okay, we can't quite go that ham, but we can. Like, are you gonna her. be okay? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> she definitely needs to be a hard ass still though and that's like yeah she's got a bullet in her and she's just kind of like perturbed yeah. about it <laughs> like, <laughs> like darn it yeah <laughs> several people died shucks <laughs> <laughs> i was curious aiden what you thought about them having joel and tess's goal are, is to get a car battery to find tommy to reach tommy Whereas in the video game, they're just smuggling more merchandise that Robert sold. I think I think that's such a I think it's such a really cool way to kind of tie back in uh, Tommy because it yeah. definitely seems like we're getting far more of their sibling dynamic uh, in the uh, in the show. Yeah, because with the game, they had the they had like I mean they had a good amount, but obviously with the most of this, the meat of the story was just Joel and Ellie. Because um, I can't, I just can't wait to see more of, I mean, more of Tommy, especially since the actor who plays him is just really cool. I forget his, I think it's, no, is it Gabriel Luna? Yeah, Gabriel Luna. I was thinking of Diego Luna, but that's, that's a different actor entirely. But um, I'm, I'm really excited to see kind of like the intensity between them because, um, not spoilers, if you, if you play the game, uh, there's a certain level of intensity between the two, because uh, I mean they spent a long time surviving together, and Joel, as the elderly brother, is like you know talks about how he kept them alive, which is interesting considering I don't know if in the game Tommy is like the game universe Tommy is a military veteran, 
But I want, I wonder if Tommy being a military vet is going to twist their dynamic up a little bit, at least in the post outbreak years. Yeah. yeah. So I think not having any idea <laughs> how it works out in the game, uh, there was a line that Joel gives to Marlene. I yeah. think it's something about you're the one who turned him yeah. against me. Mm hmm. That makes me think he's working with Firefly. There's something like that in the game. And that that's the point of tension. Yeah. Or conflict. I don't know. I don't know if he gives the same line, but it is that like the two of them in the video game, the two of them are estranged and like they haven't spoken to each other in years. And mm. it has something to do with Tommy choosing to help the Fireflies. You you yeah. get, but you get in the video game. We get no backstory on that. So uh, if the TV I, show grants I mean, us that, that'll be new stuff for us too. I'm really hoping that they hit on like what exactly happened there, like why they're no yeah. longer, how long they were together, why they're no longer together, like what I want to know. <laughs> yeah, because especially with the the big thing That's in the community cool is that people in the community love they we want more Tommy. Yes, Tommy is like the the, oh, okay. the the unsung hero of the game. Give me more Tommy, please. <laughs> yeah, and he sounds so mm. much like the vo the voice that he's using sounds a lot like I know it's not the same actor, but he sounds really similar. <laughs> who who played him in the game? Uh, let's see. I'm gonna, I'm looking it up right now. This just means I need to play uh, the Last of Us. Or one again. <laughs> you just need to it's play it again. Enough. Jeffrey Pierce. In yeah. fact, Jeffrey Pierce is the guy who who played him in the game, and I think, if I remember correctly, he's he's also in the show, but he's not. Obviously, he's not playing Tommy. He's playing somebody else. Yeah. Oh, okay. So he's in the show. Okay, I couldn't remember who all they brought into oh. the into the show. Cool. Mm -hmm. That is cool. Cause, cause I know Ashley Johnson's gonna be in it. I know Troy Baker's gonna be Troy in Baker. it. And Troy Baker. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. It just means I need to buy The Last of Us Part One and just play it like a <laughs> remake. Oh yeah, I've I've been waiting on that, but I I think I'll I'll get it eventually. So did you guys figure out the smuggling code as fast as Ali did? No. <laughs> no. I was so disappointed that I didn't get I, it. I didn't get a good look at what she was looking at. <laughs> I was pissed that I didn't get Bill and Frank. Frank. <laughs> like, oh, God damn. She's good. She is. She is. <laughs> she's smart. She's, she is. She is wickedly smart. That was the other thing. I was like, okay, she's also very competent. It's That was the, you know, kind of coming back to that comparison and contrast. Of, yeah, you know, like. Uh, her and, and Sarah, they're they're both very different characters, but they're similar in that they're like kind of mature beyond their years or something uh, that sounds weird yeah, no. Ellie, ellie's a lot more like joel yeah i will say in a lot in a lot of ways yeah absolutely than sarah was i agree with that yeah sarah contrasts a little more although i did like she goes into joel's drawer to get the money in the watch but she also touches a knife that's in there and the knife is such it becomes like such an iconic ellie thing that mm -hmm. I, I think that was like their kind of nod of connecting the two. That was kind of yeah how I felt with that. I, I yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the scene where she's okay, because I didn't get it, honestly. <laughs> I was like, there seems to be a lot of weight given to this knife. I wonder if that means something more to somebody else. Yeah. So that yeah. I am curious. I think that's what they were going for was sense. like to connect the two of them. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. That that actually that would be very like that's good, you know, whatever. Oh yeah. Whatever. Uh yeah. Ellie has her pocket knife and then Joel doesn't need weapons because he's got his two guns, but his his left arm and his right arm. Yes. He, he's, he's ever loving <laughs> shit out of people. Oh yeah. How how is that scene with him beating the the beating that guard to death? I'm sure that guard is the dead. I'm sure he's dead. Guard. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. No, oh, yeah. He, that was he He's not alive anymore. Definitely. Was not I <laughs> I loved I loved love love the little context of it him remembering when Sarah died and like yeah. he like yep. Neil kind of brings it up again and I, I hate to just like keep repeating it but like it really does seem like he for an, for a split second 
he forgets that Ellie isn't his daughter and like the parental paternal side of mm-hmm. him just comes up again and it just it just goes into fight or flight mode and Joel always chooses fight. Yeah. And he just obliterates this guy. Wow. And Ellie's so like, holy he shit. Didn't with Sarah though. Well, yeah. Well, also, like, in the context, the guard was, like, a lot further away, so he couldn't do that. Also, like, Absolutely. Sarah, it was a different circumstance, yeah. but I, it, it was a second chance right. of a yeah. sort. Yeah, I know, mean. And I think. You know? I mean, think yeah, I'm sure it. he's run that scenario through his head thinking, oh, I should have done this. I should have yes. done that. And. Yeah. He still wears the watch, even yeah. though it's broken. That's, yeah. like, a, a, you know, seems to be a, like, memory of her then, for sure. Yeah. If, uh, you know, there's no other. Yeah, so I that's I thought that that was the thing there is it was you know they link it back to there it's like he gets a do over almost yeah, yeah. and uh, that that's what he did with it <laughs> yeah uh, I it's mean like, like I in a way you can't blame him I mean like you mentioned I mean like can you imagine like feeling your child die in your arms and you have to live with that for twenty years you know yeah. thinking about like right. if I did this maybe she'd still be alive yeah. Or so it sorts, and I mean, it kind of just like like comes out, and almost like the running theme of like part one uh, is always about the whole, you know, like a, a parent's love for their child and all that, and how it can be like both a beautiful thing and also lead you to do like horrible things. Like for example, yeah. when earlier Joel just like left those people on the side of the road because you know, like he has mm-hmm. to get his family to safety, his brother and his and his kid. Yeah, you know? yeah, mm-hmm. and they were both kind of, you know, the other. You know, both him and or uh, Sarah and Tommy were both uh, like more on the side of like we, we should, should stop. stop yeah, kind of Joel's like, no, keep going. Yeah. It's it's crazy how like Tommy and I'm not saying like everyone who sees war like that is jaded, but like this guy's been to war and his first instinct was to stop and help them, and yeah. Joel was like, no, fuck him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah someone else, someone else will come pick them up. Joel is very survival down. driven. Yes. Like, right. he's like, we, we got to do this to survive. This is what we're doing. He is very pragmatic and more importantly, selfish. Yeah. In that way. Yeah, there's two reflexes in yeah. a crisis. It's you run toward it or away from it mm-hmm. generally. And like, that's uh, kind of, that's somebody who's been in the military, you know, that's like a, a first responder or something like that. Usually, um, I would imagine their first reflex would be to see how they could yeah. help uh, generally, not universally. But yeah. Which is uh, which is just heartbreaking yeah. that he just stands there when Sarah's dying because yes. he can't. He knows exactly. it's there's it's nothing over- you can do. Yeah, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. It's just uh, Eric. Ugh. Got ranching. Sorry. Yes. How would you how how would you feel? <laughs> up in the sand. That's no, okay. How would you feel about the reveal of Ellie's uh, wound? Oh yeah. Oh, so I kind of felt like that's what it was when they wouldn't. Talked. I, I was like, okay, so she's immune. <laughs> but, um, I, you know, you need that to make it. Otherwise, she's not important enough to take. You know, that's the whole thing. It doesn't really make sense if she's just some like random big like, wig daughter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like that doesn't actually seem to make a ton of sense. Or at least that's not a very good, well thought out plan for your your you know, like you know budding terrorist organization. I would think <laughs> seems like that's not going to solve many problems. I don't know. Not not an expert in that. Regard. I thought they did a really <laughs> great job with that scene where um, I think Kim is the name of the woman, the other woman who's with Marlene. And she's like, why are we doing all this? People have died, like, you know, questioning all these decisions. And then Marlene gives her whatever's on that piece of paper and her her mm-hmm. countenance just completely 180s. And she's like, whatever you need. Like we'll do it, and and I just thought that was really a really neat way of like conveying what was going on with Ellie just through mm. this this other person. Mm, yeah, being like holy shit, is that true? And she's like, "Yep." So that's why. Yeah. So that's why I need you to shut your mouth. Yeah, <laughs> like you can't even. Yeah, you can't tell anyone because that becomes a liability. Right. That you know, it's like too valuable of information to spread around or whatever. Mm. Uh, and and some people cool. aren't going to believe it you know it's like other people are just going to respond the way test yeah. does yeah uh when they do you know sees the 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 test kit thing or whatever the at the end right the tablet. yeah she's like we gotta go yeah, she's... <laughs> um 
And then the closing shot where That's so we good. cut back to the radio and the eighties music yeah. plays. We get Link back to Ellie figure you know, figuring the out what the, the code was. It's like oh, it means trouble. I'm assuming that's an eighties song because really? yeah. of how they're panning to it. I it's an eighties song. Yeah, yeah, I didn't actually like look it up. I was certain I was like, that's it a was cool weird because I was like, <laughs> I feel like I know eighties songs and that one came up and I was like, I don't know that one, but um You're like, what, what, the sh- what the heck <laughs> is that? <laughs> like I don't know what this is. And like Placing in a song by decade for me is definitely that's a that's a lost uh, cause. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I was like that must be why they have the book work. there because there must be certain songs that come on. Right. They're like, wait, I don't know what this is. <laughs> they have to look uh, through the book. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, yeah, you only got a couple minutes too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry, what's he trying to tell us? I mean, I imagine oh, they, they probably they probably yeah they probably would play. I, I guess I, I guess like it wouldn't make sense to play like more famous song because then people would like catch up on it. Mm. But like, can you can you imagine if they played like I don't know like '90s rap? All of a sudden, Tupac <laughs> comes on the radio. Oh no! Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my god, '90s music. What if that were the uh, that's like, the trouble? Yeah, that's the, the trouble. Bad news code. Joel just like, Joel yeah. just hates gangster rap. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That shot of of the city though is is great. Yes, and the tiny little sounds, the low clicks. Yeah. Oh my god! I am oh, so I okay. am so excited to see how they do the clickers because like the 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 clicker segments in the game are the the first one is always terrifying because these things are gross. They are super duper gross. I think I might have seen one in the. There is uh, one in the shot. It's in the corner. Uh, if you're paying attention, yeah, there is one in the corner, in like the lower yeah. left. Yeah. Huh. Okay. I was thinking. I think it's like the the preview of the next episode or whatever it is. I can't. Yeah. Remember what comes? It's like the after show wrap up stuff that was playing on after the episode. I felt like there was a a promo shot of one of the. There oh, was. There's yeah. a few more monster. Yeah, I think there's a couple types. in the yeah in the trailer too. In the trailer, they teased a bloater, the big okay. one. Well, well they, they oh. teased click. The same type. Well, they teased clickers and a bloater, which uh, a bloater is a oh. bigger one. Gotcha. Yeah. When they're when the zombies, when you first encounter the zombies and they're running through the city, I loved how like discoordinated that they are, because oh, yeah. they're not in control of their own motor functions. It's the the fungus is like trying to make them do what it wants it to do, and so they like run into yeah. stuff and fall over. And I just thought that was a really cool detail. The extras were, yeah, they were earning their, yeah, uh, their <laughs> pay or yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? The pe- like that was, yeah, they were like flailing around. It was very Throwing unnatural, yeah. jerky yeah. movement and, stuff. Yeah, like yeah, it's like, <laughs> and I think it's work. And I think that's a great way because you know, inevitably, inevitably, people are going to compare this to The Walking Dead. I think that's mm. a great way to kind of uh, our zombies tell the are audience different. how yes, ours are different because in yeah. The Walking Dead, they're classic Romero zombies. They're slow, moving horde, stuff like that. But these ones, they will like not really parkour over counters, more more than throw themselves over it and get back up right. immediately and just like attack you. As well as like there's a hierarchy of evolution, which I always love that in zombie and like zombie stuff. Like I want to see. I want to see like like you know like the older these things are, the more disgusting they get, and like the cool little mutations they get. Cause it's so gross, but so cool because it makes sense. Like a virus will mutate, you know what I mean? And but this is fungi, so it grows. You know, mm-hmm. it's neat. It is neat. It places more and more material with its own, yeah, or like whatever it, he's talking about at the beginning. Uh, and man. we'll see more of that next episode. So I'm just excited to see what, yeah. The one guy who is totally like in bl- full bloom on the, uh, you know, on yeah. the wall or whatever was like a nice little beautiful. foreshadowing it's, of what was to come kind of thing. It's both beautiful and uh, horrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It was, it's creepy for sure. That reminded me <laughs> of, um, you guys remember that movie Annihilation with Natalie Portman? I don't think I saw that. No, it sounds it, familiar, but it's not coming to me. They're, it's like uh, there's a lot of like surrealist imagery and all that, and w- there's one scene in which there's like this human that's kind of like attached to the, to the wall, 
and like their like their like their skull is like split apart everywhere and it reminded me of that kind of like it's it was almost beautiful it was almost it's it's like almost beautiful if it wasn't like a person being glued to a, decomposing on a wall you know yeah right yeah yeah it looks like artwork but it's also the reality of it is body horror man it's gross I don't know. They haven't taken the chance to do like there have been opportunities for a lot of potentially quite gory scenes. And like even the chunk the old lady took out of uh, the baking lady's neck was like, you know, not showing as much as they could have ostensibly there, I suppose, you know, wasn't like B B zombie movie gore or something. Uh, It was still pretty graphic i'm not i i think it seems like they're subscribing to like (laughs) the less is more kind of thing where it's like you don't you you don't see it as much but when it does happen it's like oh god compared to game of thrones in which like everyone died so horrifically it's almost like when it happens you're like oh is the 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 hound split a dude in half you're like oh that's cool but that's like the third person he split in half that way you know (laughs) i was just gonna say because like we did we actually watch anyone else like specifically die or did we just come across dead bodies a other, a Fedra, otherwise other Adrian, than sarah a Fedra guy got sniped and there there was that um that bomb that went grenade or whatever that went off when tess was uh with robert and some guy got his face and right. and tommy killed okay. a guy yeah. yeah, and a bunch I mean, of people I'm, died. That's, in the, in the, in the, he absolutely <laughs> did shoot a dude. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Uh, I was, I, I, there's a bunch of spaces too. We watched. Yeah, you're right. Okay, never mind. Fishing. <laughs> Thought we might. But you didn't. Something. We didn't see anything I, real up close and gory. graphic. Yeah, and gory. Yeah. Right. Mm. Uh, I was gonna say like, oh, well, like Sarah was the most like prominent <laughs> death we see on screen. It, it is for is, sure. Yeah, and that's the most important. The only you know? So that makes sense. I, but yeah, it's like yeah, there's a couple bullets from nowhere and stuff right before that. <laughs> I, I can't wait to watch because I got my mom interested in watching it. I can't wait to watch her reaction. Because you like, oh. listen, for me, watching Sarah die is effed up. Can you imagine being a parent oh, and watching that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like literally the wor- it's like your worst nightmare. So I've seen compilations of like mm-hmm. uh, parents watching The Last of Us, and it's always like it's so yeah. almost it's so visceral like watching their face and like it's just like it's really sad yeah i mean that's every parent's worst nightmare yeah like i i feel like that is kind of the litmus test if you're gonna enjoy the last of us if you don't cry during that <laughs> like first of all where is your like who stole your soul and also like stay within stay, stay within like 10 feet away from me you psychopath <laughs> <laughs> I'll even take a little, like a single tear. (laughs) Eric's going to tell me, I mean, I was straight face when it happened. I won't admit it. No, (laughs) I wouldn't admit that. Are you kidding me? You just said uh, you don't want to be within 10 feet of me if that were the case. (laughs) Obviously. I I was going to say, I don't remember like actually weeping, which would be a big big and significant moment. Um, But it was like an incredibly gut-wrenching scene. I'm not sure that I didn't like well up a bit for sure. How dare you? <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying I didn't, you know, <laughs> I was never emotionally moved. But yeah, that wasn't the like, oh, God, I'm 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 so sad. It was very sad. But that was like, oh, they actually did it. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What's going to happen next? Yeah, Seriously? that was like a very. Yeah, like I said, it was a Game of Thrones moment for me. I was like, oh. I don't know who has plot armor. Okay. Uh-huh. No one has like, plot armor, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, I can't tell. <laughs> awesome. The, and the crazy thing is, it's almost like, because, like, they're going to be introducing characters that uh, either uh, weren't, either, didn't get that much development in the original game, or just weren't in the original game at all. So I can't wait to see uh, how that um, turns out. Um, yeah. I mean, it's going to be really, I, I like, I, I saw this episode and I remember uh, after a certain point, I was like, this objectively might be the best video game adaptation I think that's ever been done. Like objectively, like in live action form. I I mean, it's really great how they're 
they're sticking so true to the source material and yet they're expanding on it in a way that mm. you know you can just you can just fit that right into the video game it's like oh you explained yeah. this thing that i've had questions about for years thank yeah. you i appreciate that like they're yeah. they're going about it really smart and i i really appreciate it yeah i mean it also helps having mm. a the the lead writer of the game be attached to the show. And what were you gonna say, Eric? I was just gonna say, and it's as somebody who didn't play the game, uh, you know, yeah, their their loyalty to the source material that, that loyalty hasn't been a hindrance to producing like a good show uh in and of itself. That's just a good show to watch without any other context. So I it's that's an impressive feat. Yeah. Uh, it's like hard to do mm -hmm. to to satisfy both audiences, you know, like fans of, you know, it's like kind of how people are talking about Andor, I think, how it's something that, you know, if you love Star Wars, you're going to like that. Yeah. But if you don't love Star Wars, you'll probably still like Andor. I, I think that this is a similar vibe to me. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, sorry. That's good. No, that's good to hear. <laughs> no, I I think, you know, in a, in a kind of industry in which like it seems that a good amount of of um of people of people working on uh like uh tv shows of like of uh, stuff that's either books or games where it seems like we hear a lot of the news that they make a big effort about like you know either just going away from the source material completely or just mocking it like you hear in the news with like the witcher show and i yeah. tried watching halo and it, and, and it was it was like not good at all <laughs> but uh and i know craig and neil also made a decent thing about like they didn't want the actors to like play the game mm -hmm. to because they want them to form their own experiences, which I, I get how some people would be like, why, you know, like why as a, why as a fan of the last of us, would I be excited when someone says, Oh, by the way, they did not play the last of us. It's like, well, well <laughs> shit. You Bella, know, I, 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 Bella Ramsey cheated and watched let's plays on YouTube. You know, what's funny. <laughs> Ellie, I was gonna say, she's as accurate as she is. What's funny is that that's, to boy. that's totally in character for Ellie <laughs> to do something. <laughs> that he's like fuck you i'll do what i want kind of break the rules a little bit yeah <laughs> i do what i want like, well technically i didn't i didn't, <laughs> I didn't play I, it i didn't play the game <laughs> i did watch every possible permutation and out uh, but i i think anyway. the, the main difference between like that and like halo and all that stuff is that like i said neil Druckmann, the one of the the one of the writers of The Last of Us is like working on the show. Yeah. So it's like they don't necessarily need to because they literally have a guy who helped make it. Right. Working with them. You, but, you've um, got it. Yeah. Yeah. Which I just. You can't uh, get a more direct source material. <laughs> literally. Yeah. Right. Which speaking of Neil, um, he's directing next week's episode apparently. Oh. Ooh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because this week's, this week's was directed by Craig Mazin, the guy, you know, who did Chernobyl. I know I promised everyone fanboy by Chernobyl again, but <laughs> No, bring it up again. It's, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. It's mm -hmm. yeah, it's been it's been almost an hour, so it's good. You should watch it. <laughs> it's it's great. Uh I was almost not gonna lie to you, I was almost surprised. I was like a part of me was waiting for an after credit scene and I remembered, oh wait, HBO does the uh the the mm -hmm. recaps afterwards. Because it's it was been a while since I watched House of the Dragon. I was like, I forgot they do that. Oh, no. speaking of House of the Dragon, uh, the premiere of the the first episode was the biggest HBO audience viewing that they've had since House of the Dragon. It's second. Say, oh, yeah. It's okay, second on say, HBO like, to House of the Dragon. I was going to say, there's no way it could be in like, anything with Game of Thrones and all that, but like it, the fact that it was, it's like second place is insane. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, it was funny because Neil Druckmann put a tweet and he was like, wow, you guys decided to show up, huh? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, I love Neil. Neil, like, let's say that Neil is such a cool, is just a, is just a cool dude. I really <laughs> like him. Yeah, uh, you're, you were about 10 years later, I think, than, or maybe five later than a lot of the, like, or really bad video game and other like kind of nerd content property movies mm -hmm. coming out. 
So it's wild as hell to me to see such a, like, yeah, like I said it before, but like a piece of art yeah. kind of, you know, like produced from a video game. Yeah. Uh, that is, like, like you guys are saying, so faithfully adapted and stuff. I, that is such a, a cool change of pace for me mm. to I, see. I wonder if, you know, you're talking about that, that 10 years difference, if the transition from cheesy superhero movies to right. we can now have serious mega blockbuster superhero movies has maybe Alongside Lord of the Rings. Yeah, maybe yeah, that's definitely. like paved the way for like, hey, you know, video games, we can take these seriously. I just wonder if there's some kind of connection there. Right. They're they're becoming a more respected like medium of, yeah. of art yeah. or storytelling, yeah. maybe. At least in like live action format, because if you look at animation, games have been treated a lot better. Like have you guys and have you seen Netflix's Castlevania? No. It's it's like amazing. Random episodes. <laughs> it's it, it's it's like amazing it is a very good adaptation but yeah like live action wise things have been kind of at least like uh the movies i mean like i still i'm still very adamant like i'm both a bit ironic about it that the best video game uh movie is still the original mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> i won't argue <laughs> <laughs> But uh, apparently I'm... the Sonic movies apparently aren't that bad. Mr. E will argue. <laughs> I... No, I... Yeah. <laughs> Are you really going to argue with uh, your, your soul like, is mine? Best m- video game movie is objectively the Super Mario Bros. movie. That's <laughs> just <laughs> a, like a scientific fact. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Jeez. With Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. Uh huh. We finally get to understand. They really are the Mario Brothers. They're the Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh my god! Yeah. god. I loved watching drama with him when he was growing up. He's oh, and like the I I, owns my funny bone. The 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 the, <laughs> the billion Resident Evil movies. Oh, we don't need to bring those up. <laughs> I, they were entertaining. They were though, entertaining. They made a, like, they made a know, billion dollars, so okay. you know, guess right. somebody yeah, watched them. They kept making them, <laughs> <laughs> right? But that was the tone of a movie that came from video games over the top, um, yeah. up until very recently. So it's yeah, it's just very cool. Mm-hmm. It, it's funny too because like you know it's like a big trend. Like I think it's kind of started with the Last of Us, though. You, though you can even go further and say it kind of started with like. Hideo Kojima, because like Metal Gear Solid, Hideo Kojima is like very heavily influenced by American cinema and like his games are like very cinematic. But The Last of Us was like really the first, from what I, from what I remember, the first big AAA game to really feel like a movie. And I feel that it was, you know, it's kind of, it almost kind of ushered in this like new renaissance of games like that. I mean, for yeah. example, God of War, yeah. I mean, the way it is now. Um, I mean, even, even, even if like Uncharted was still a bit of a precursor to that, because it was like action movies. But if you played like Uncharted three and then you play four, it's like it still has an action movie vibe, but definitely has is a lot more intimate and somber. And there's like most like uh, Sony exclusive games are kind of like that. And and even though like Sony exclusive games are kind of like the big like blockbuster ones, you still have like you still have like some from from other studios like um uh oh uh plague tale i played the first game a bit oh, it was really yeah. good plague i never Tale's finished amazing. it amazing but... mm-hmm. it's amazing mm-hmm. and uh I believe you. and of course uh <laughs> like even like sorry uh i mean no, i haven't played that one. it's good it's good but uh yeah it's just really neat almost kind of to see like to see it become like a TV show because it's like if you watch The Last of Us, it just, you know, just feels like a movie. And, you know, some people find that boring. And I say, like, listen, <laughs> everyone's, entitled to their own, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but you are missing out. Yeah. You're yeah, missing out. <laughs> yeah. No. I'm, well, yeah. now but they no, can watch yeah, the TV show. So, you know. Yeah, right. I can. My parents can finally understand. And they, I bet you. I yeah. bet you. When I show it to them, they're gonna be like, "This is from a video game." Yeah, <laughs> there was <laughs> there was a an I, article yeah. on like one of the game developers. His parents can finally like they don't play video games, and his parents can watch the TV show and like understand what he helped make, which I just thought Wait. was like. <laughs> 
I remember I think Neil himself said that in an interview. It's like it's really cool. Maybe maybe it was I don't know who it was. I just read it just like skimmed the headline, but it's really cool that people who wouldn't normally pick up the video game can experience this story in another in another way. It is awesome. It's, and it's I mean great. we're seeing we're seeing a big trend trend of that. I mean like Amazon's making a God of War show. Netflix is making Horizon show. I mean, Amazon also has Fallout. So, I mean, like, I I hope the, those games are more Last of Us and less Halo. Because be I wouldn't want. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want anyone to suffer through the Halo show. I'm not even a big Halo fan. <laughs> and I was like, this sucked. <laughs> this, this sucked. I didn't even try. Everyone was like, it's awful. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like Halo movie? Don't watch yeah, it. No. Gotcha. You remember, Spiel- remember, when Big pass. remember when Steven Spielberg was attached to make a Halo movie? I remember that. That never happened. What? Yeah. It never happened. When? Like in oh 2013. What a missed opportunity. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh. We've been talking for like an hour and a half. Um... <laughs> should probably work on wrapping things up any mm. any last minute thoughts questions Wait, what about you eric what do you got i'm trying to think if i have anything really good and prescient to throw in at the end i, I should have been preparing for this. <laughs> i got the feeling that we were no pressure toward the end and no no clever quips coming to mind though. i we'll see. i'm gonna segue back to the beginning of this and let <laughs> me mm-hmm. say i'm going to call that the the last episode of the season one is going to be the second <laughs> half of the firefly <laughs> thing and if they do it okay. with the second episode that would be so underwhelming because it wouldn't make sense considering <laughs> what's what i think they're going to adapt i'm just i'm just saying i'm just saying that would be interesting yeah i also you know like i said i have chuck e cheese tokens running on the line for it but no <laughs> but mm-hmm. but seriously um it was fan freaking tastic and i just i cannot wait to uh see more <sighs> there i'm there were two easter eggs i got really excited about and there's easter eggs throughout the entire show um yeah but there were two i got really excited about the opening shot after they bring up 2003 is on a window the w- yeah window yeah yes. which is that you've got the light coming through it and the wind gently blowing the curtains and that's the menu screen for the game yeah so oh my god almost, it, it literally is i almost screamed <laughs> it it's really cool that's such a cool idea oh man yeah uh. i didn't realize gustavo who did the music for the game was coming back for the tv show which yeah, I didn't even bother to I like. I didn't. I didn't think about music. I should have thought about music for the TV show, but um, you hear the same. You hear the main themes come up, and it's like I know this music from the game is amazing. <laughs> um, it's it's amazing how that man can make me feel so much emotion with just literally one one instrument. It's amazing. I was just gonna. The sound design was really cool, minimalist, but like very good to keep the tone moving and oh uh, yeah there's a lot of little stuff especially some of those eerie scenes that there's just these slight effects in the underneath the bass sound and it just sets you on edge he's so good oh, at yeah. what he does really well put together <laughs> yeah and that stuff's tough and to speaking accomplish of, well it's speaking hard. of that intro i mean the intro sequence in general is just beautiful it is it's very good in a hor- in a horrific kind of way but yeah, I am so ready for Pedro Pascal to sweep the awards ceremony. <laughs> well, if you if you are in everything, you know they got to give you a reward for something. Ser- That's right. It, you're layering your odds. <laughs> Seriously, that that man All that that chances. man's bank account must be like skyrocketing. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's not, and that's why he's got. Maybe so that's many, why he's got. They're underpaying so him. Yeah. <laughs> he's got to take on extra gigs. He's got you know, like three different jobs. They're all very high-paying actor <laughs> gigs, and just barely getting <laughs> hand to mouth. Still, I assure he's, you. He's like, at least in the last bus show, I get to show my face most of the time. Oh, yeah. 
that was that was the running joke on why they didn't do spores in the TV show was because Pedro was like, I don't want to wear a mask the entire season. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. I've been there, done that. <laughs> yeah, it's literally how like literally how I rose to fame. You know, just playing a space dad, and now he's just a now he's an angstier dad. Now he's just angstier dad. Oh. Mm. Apocalypse dad. I believe Laura, you were saying you want to segue into like some kind of like a closing line or um, something along those lines. So, uh, well, the the podcast can be posted on my channel. So if anyone wants to find me, uh, you're probably on my channel already. Uh, <laughs> so t- do you guys have anything, uh, you know, where can people find you if you want people to find you? Well, thankfully, Eric and I are on the same channel. So that's yeah. very easy. Makes life easy. <laughs> Makes it easy for you. Yeah. Yes. So uh, YouTube.com slash at Irrational underscore radio. We do a lot of gaming stuff. And occasional tabletop stuff is kind of neat. Mm. What do you think, Eric? Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we we're on Twitch as well. Same uh, same handles. Uh, Rational Radio. There's an underscore there too. But mo- both places you'll find us without it. Mm. Um, those are the big things. Um, mm. you know, well, uh, thanks for having us. This yeah. is super fun. No, yeah, I'm just seriously. I'm just glad that I have people to talk to about it. Honestly, because otherwise I'd just be. <laughs> I'm I'm just sitting on my couch by myself. <laughs> you're just you're just like ah. Like my oh, my husband my husband out. has a D and D game at the same at like eight on Sunday when mm. the episodes air. So it's like I can't even <laughs> I can't even poke him. Be like, look, watch this with me. <laughs> it's like no, <laughs> no, it's just me. <laughs> so yeah, no, definitely. Thank you guys for um coming to chat and i'm super excited that you know we'll be here next week and doing it all over again and i'm excited to get eric's reaction to all the stuff that we know is coming (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah i feel like i'm in for a wild ride it is that this this sounds accurate (laughs) yeah and uh to be blunt uh yeah you are (laughs) that might have been the clever line to go out on how about that Mm -hmm. got it eventually (laughs) It's okay. We'll uh we'll get better the more we go eventually. Yeah, for sure. I'm sorry, guys. We're not professionals. We're just here to hang out. Mm-hmm. Bunch of bunch of dorks. <laughs> All right. We'll see everyone next week then. All right. Adios. Bye. Bye. <laughs>